take it here and I want to, if you will, turn with me to Romans chapter 5 this morning and uh, it's, I've got a, just a few verses I want to share with you and I was thinking about uh, uh, us covering the building and how God's covered me with the blood of Christ and you know I'm just thankful that uh, God saw fit uh, to, to save a, 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 an old piece of dirt like me because it's all I am is a piece of dirt, amen? That's all I am. But God loved me enough to send Jesus to die for me. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm glad that I can stand up here and say that I've been born again. Can you say that this morning? I've been born again. I've been bought. I'm a blood-bought, Bible-believing, born-again Christian. Amen? I can say that this morning. I hope everybody here can. In the book of Romans, chapter 5, the Bible says this. In verse 8, But God commended His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I want to share with you a thing. I, 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 my, my uncle, or my cousin, actually, he's my cousin. You all know him if I tell you who he is. But uh, anyway, I was talking to him one day, and talking to another, uh, uh, one, of, one of my uncles, and Talked to several of my family about when they were in Vietnam, and and uh, a lot of times they would tell me about kids, uh, uh, how the uh, the VC would would go in there and they would take kids and they would make kamikazes out of these kids. They'd wire them up with explosive and send them into the American camps, and they'd they'd blow them up and this and that. But a lot of times the uh, uh, kids, uh, the GIs would. Uh, you know, befriend these kids and these kids, and they'd play and all this. And 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 I've talked, you know, I've I've, I've read several stories as well. And and uh, but this one particular man got attached to this seven-year-old girl, and she's a pretty little girl. And I, I, I'm a reading, I, I didn't see her, but I'm I'm saying uh, uh, he got attached to her just like it was his own daughter, and and. Uh, uh, you know, like I say, one thing led to another. They kept, uh, she would come around to the camp and they, he would swing her in the air and they'd just play like you do with your own kids. And, and, uh, and then one day, uh, they wired her up. The Big Kong wired her up and sent her out to the camp by herself. And, and as, as she was coming into the camp, the, the, the American men there, they saw her coming and they, they noticed she was along. And before she ever got in the camp, she opened up her blouse and showed the explosives, and then men had to shoot her. And the man that shot her, he, 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 he for 30, 40 years now, he's just had torments because of this little girl. He had to shoot this little girl, and you know, it, and he was the very one that played with her the most and all that, and and he never could get it. And, and you know, I couldn't imagine what I, I couldn't imagine going through that. But also, if you think about it. This little girl gave her life to save his. She did. She gave, and that's what Jesus done. That's what Jesus done. He gave his life to save mine. He gave his life to save yours. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. That's where, where he tells us in, in Romans here, chapter 5, God commended. You know, and if you look up the word commended, you can find all kinds of definitions. Uh, but uh, when, I, when I think of command, I think God demonstrated. God demonstrated His love for us when He allowed, the, or when he, when, he, when, he, when, he, when he set the plan of salvation in place. When He, when he set it in motion, uh, God demonstrated His love for us. Uh, and, and as, as uh, uh, I've got some layman definitions, if you will, to the word commend. The first one being to make good. You ever think, you ever made anything good? If you made an agreement, you made it good when you finished that agreement, right? Or, or, or there's been times when at the house, uh, uh, maybe uh, somebody's come along and, or, or maybe somebody give you too much change at the grocery store or whatever it might be. And in order to make that good, you had to return it or, or whatever it is. Let me tell you something, folks. God made it good. Amen? He demonstrated and made it good. And, and, and as, I, as I think about this, and, and I'm going to hit, you, hit a little more on this in a few minutes, but uh, uh, 
my first definition, if you will, would be to commend, would be to make good. Another would would be to offer one as a guarantee. And and we'll hit on this a little more in a minute too, but to offer one as a guarantee. Let me tell you something, folks. Uh, the guaranteed way to get to God is through Jesus Christ. And God offered Him for us. Amen? You know, can you imagine? And, and, I, and I've thought about this and thought about this and I've heard people say it time and time again how that God had to turn His back on Christ. And you say, well, where's that in the Bible? When Christ was on the cross, what did He say? Why hast thou forsaken me? God had to turn away from Christ in order for me and you to have the plan of salvation. He offered Him up as a guarantee to my salvation. Amen? That's what God did when you, when you look at that word commend. That's what He's done. He's offered up His Son as a guarantee to me and you. I'm a, I have a guarantee. It's a definite thing. You know what? Uh, yesterday morning... We made plans to come and put the roof on the church, but it was not definite because it was raining. It wasn't a guarantee. I wasn't guaranteed I was even going to get there. But this is a guarantee from God that we can go to heaven. Amen? A guarantee written with the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a guarantee. Listen. Another one is this, to form a league or a union. That's what commend means, to form a league or a union. If you form a union, what have you got? You've got a relationship. It could be a business relationship. It could be a joint venture with a business partner, whatever it is, but, but you, have, you have formed a union with that person, whatever it may be. Or it could be a marriage. When we got married, what did we do? We agreed to form a union with our partner, with, with, with our wife or our husband. We agreed to form that union. Amen? When we stood in front of the preacher, we not only agreed with, to the preacher, but we told God. How often do people fail to remember what they tell God when they stand up there and say, I do. And how often this day and time it's so taken for granted. It's just thrown to the wind. Uh, and, and we're not going to get on married. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? It's a union between man and woman. Uh, and notice I said man and woman. It's a union between man. And I hope somebody on YouTube hears that. It's between man and woman. But nevertheless, uh, uh, it's a union that God has put together. And that's what commended means. When he said God hath commended... <clears throat> his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrated His true love to make good. Listen, I can't, I can't, when I, when I realized, and when you realized that you were lost, what could you do? Think about it. When you were lost, at the point, the very point in time that you realized that you was lost, what could you do? Nothing. And that's what made it so scary, remember? That's what made it so sorrowful, so hurtful, so worrisome was that at the very point in time we realized that we were lost and bound for hell, the, the worst thing or the greatest thing, if you will, that we realized was we could do nothing about it. We could, and that's how we got saved, amen? That's how we got right with God is that point when we realized I can do nothing to save myself. There's nothing I can do. When we got to that point, that's when we got saved. Amen? That's what, see, people, people come to the altar all the time, but when they, if they never get to the point and realize that they can't save themselves, they'll never truly trust in the God and Savior. Amen? They'll never truly do that until they realize they cannot save themselves. 
It's like Andy was talking in the Sunday school class. Uh, uh, lots of times, uh, and I, uh, it was Clark, right, that said that, said that uh, uh, a lot of times the reason uh, we, we don't uh, uh, pray or we don't ask God for directions in our lives is because we don't trust Him to show us or we don't have enough confidence in Him or faith in Him. Folks, let me tell you this. Without faith in God, there is no salvation. Amen? But we'll put our faith in God to be saved, but we won't put our faith in God to show us a direction in our lives, right? It'd be Andy's Christ. But nevertheless, he says this, to make good. I can't do it by myself, folks. Verse 6 says this, listen, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, you catch them two words there in due time Christ died from the ungodly why did he put due time why could he not have said uh, for when we were yet without strength Christ died from the ungodly why did he say due time what use was it to put that in there that, here's my thoughts and I'm not a, a scholar but I'll tell you this uh, God put it in the due time is the right time. It was the exact perfect time. Think about this. They will never know one of us got saved at the same time. But we got saved at the exact perfect time that God wanted us to be. Amen. Amen. Jesus died at the exact perfect time God had planned. Amen. If he'd have died early, it may not have made the effect it's made. If he'd have died later, it wouldn't have made the effect it's made. He died at the time God had planned. And it was the perfect exact time. In due time, Christ died for the young. The exact time, the, the exact place that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior was the perfect time. If I'd have been before or after, I wouldn't be here today. Amen. Think about it. I wouldn't be here today. If I'd have tried to get right with God before that time took place or afterwards, I may not have had a chance if it had been afterwards. Amen. And if I'd have done it before, you know what? I, went, I may have went all through life thinking I was saved and never ever accepted this fully and like God had planned it. Amen. It was the perfect time. God done it in the perfect time, in the perfect place, perfect one. Listen, in due time, to make good, he made good. He says in due, it was the right time. God demonstrated his true love by, by doing it in due time, exactly at the right time. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely... For a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man will some even dare to die. I got your story. 